Good evening, everyone. My name is Megan Bowman, and we are coming to you live from Western Washington University. As you are probably already aware, it is that time of year again. Yes, it's Election Day. And along with the initiatives and House representative candidates that the American public will be voting on, they will also be choosing between Linda Smith and the incumbent Patty Murray in the widely covered race for a seat in the Senate. The wide media coverage of this race is due in part to the fact that the, it is the only woman versus woman Senate race in the country, and because the race is predicted to be a very close one. As a matter of fact, Campaign and Elections Magazine, a very well-known and reliable source, predicts that Patty Murray has an 8 to 7 odd of winning over her opponent Linda Smith in the upcoming election. It is Democrat Patty Murray, the mom in tennis shoes, versus the new challenging Republican candidate Linda Smith, and the fact that they are both women may be one of the only things that they have in common. Murray and Smith claim their alliance to opposing parties. And when their positions in those parties are broken down even further, we find that they are almost as far apart ideologically as you can get. The Americans for Democratic Action, or the ADA, the nation's oldest independent liberal political organization, rated both of these candidates on a scale of 0 to 100, 0 being the most conservative and 100 being the most liberal. When the ADA considered both of the candidate, candidates' positions on certain issues, they felt important, Linda Smith was awarded a 15, making her relatively conservative, and Patty Murray was given a 90, making her considerably liberal. The generalized differences in their views due to their ideology would be that Patty Murray, being a Democrat, believes more in government control and government responsibility in taking care of those who cannot care for themselves. On the other hand, Linda Smith, being a Republican and a conservative one at that, believes in less government and more personal freedom. Oddly enough, these two candidates of opposing ends are neck and neck for a seat in the Senate, and the outcome of this race is vital to both parties. To the Republicans who want their majority to increase, and to the Democrats who are trying to hold on to what seats they still have. Another very important aspect in this year's race between Patty Murray and Linda Smith is campaign funds. According to the Federal Election Commission, Patty Murray received approximately $42 million from both individual contributions and non-party contributions. Linda Smith received individual contributions of nearly $4 million and no non-party contributions. With this evidence, along with other research we have done this quarter, we have come to the conclusion that political contributors are more interested in supporting incumbents. It doesn't make a difference what the ideology of the candidate is as long as it's a winning one. This may also be due in part to the well-known fact of the difficulty of replacing an incumbent such as Patty Murray. Contributors don't want to give their money away to someone who has the odds of losing. However, when the situation is looked at realistically, both incumbents and their challengers weigh in enormous amounts of money, ridiculously large amounts of time. It is races similar to the, those of Smith and Murray that are very close and large amounts of money are spent to get ahead that bring up issues on campaign finance reform. As a matter of fact, there is an initiative that is on the ballots right now in Massachusetts, which is being called the Clean Elections Initiative, and it is expected to be seen on the ballots in Washington soon. The initiative will provide full public financing, or clean money. It aims at replacing all private campaign money with public money, regulating expenditures, and freeing candidates from potential corruption. Now, on a lighter note, I hope all of you have made it out to the polls, letting your voice be heard and fulfilling your civic duty. Join us again at 6 o'clock for the next live update. This is Megan Bowman signing off live at Western Washington University. Have a great evening, everyone.